my freezer. Susie likes to be chunky. Bloodthirsty bugs invade Glen's mountain paradise. <clears throat> Got a mosquito in my throat right now. Yep. The hailstones are looking to strike it rich. I could be floating over a $20,000 mammoth tusk as we speak. I found it! And Andy battles the Yukon for a summer catch. I'm using a net this year, a small mesh net. Nothing in the net. Jesus Christ. Couple of beautiful bulls that way. I've got a major winter storm coming in. It's due to hit tonight or tomorrow. Gonna be here for a week. Lots of snow, ice, and freezing. I mean, my winter is gonna set in. It's it's the middle of August, and I'm worried about winter. So I have to fill my freezer. Susie likes to be chunky. Although the sun stays above the horizon in Kavik for more than two months, winter will soon return, and the caribou will travel out of Sue's reach. Caribou are called ghosts of the tundra. You won't see anything, and then all of a sudden they're popping up everywhere. They're hanging here. They're over there. I say I get into the riverbed, try to sneak my way over, see if I can get them. Pony up, girls. Time to go. See, they're on the top, and they're still quite a ways away. He's walking away. He's standing there looking down. There's a baby. Okay, so let's think like a caribou. What I'm going to do, there's a little change in elevation right here. They're happy grazing right now. The wind kind of sucks for what I'm doing. That's why these guys, by the time I get partway out, those guys are going to scent me and be gone. These guys, as long as I keep it kind of low and scooch around, I might stand a chance. At some point, I'm going to have to cross absolutely open tundra. That is a long shot. I can't do that shot. That is probably 400 yards, 500 yards. I got to get my ass out there. I can get a little closer. Let, let's try it. So I'm going to slip down here, kind of crawl, hopefully get a close enough without anybody seeing me. across a lot of open country, they may see me. I just feel really well living out here. I just can't imagine wanting to live anywhere else. And I feel really alive out here in a way that I don't when I'm not here. This is my sod house where I keep meat mostly when I'm trying to keep it cooler in the spring when it warms up here. Sod is just the roots and some of the soil that's on the top of the ground. This makes really good insulation and it's got some holes in the sod. It's been a long time since I patched it up. But right now the little chickadees, they fly right through those cracks. So I need to get some more sod and put on it to get it back in conditions. I'm looking for an area where there's moss growing in the ground. And it's not easy to find around here, but there's a place about a quarter mile down the lake. Summertime brings huge swarms of hungry mosquitoes that make Glenn's every task miserable. I just gotta go look for my head net. I think I might have left it over here when I was grayling fishing. Pretty essential. I don't want to head out of here without a head net. It's bug season, so they'll eat you up if you're not protected. Mosquitoes are just a big problem out here. The summer's like the worst thing out here. So mosquitoes, if it wasn't for them, it'd be paradise. They go for your head. They're attracted to the carbon dioxide in your breath and they tend to swarm around your head and that's one of the most vulnerable places. So it's real important to have a head net. I'm gonna keep looking. The problem is, if you don't have a way to protect yourself, everything you do becomes a lot harder when you're just constantly being harassed by mosquitoes. You're just getting hundreds of bites and it just wears you out. A human couldn't live out here without a way to protect themselves from the mosquitoes. And I sewed this shirt out of a really tight woven cotton that they usually don't bite through. 
They usually don't get through my pants, but if you don't have anything to protect you, you won't last long out here. This isn't a place where you'd want to end up naked on the tundra and get eaten alive. Mosquito in my eye. I did not find my mosquito net. <clears throat> got a mosquito in my throat right now. Looked everywhere I could think of and could not find it. But I got other things to do, so I'm gonna have to move on. Look at this. How that got there, I have no idea. Relief. Try getting me now. Little bastards. Since our kids are growing up enough that they can watch themselves, me and her in the last few years have been back to being really good partners on a lot of things. Especially hunting. Hell, it's all good. <laughs> we are going mammoth test hunting. This is the time of the year where you can actually walk down the beach and find things like um, $10,000 piece of tusk or um, a real nice tooth. Indigenous Alaskans have a long tradition of making art from mammoth remains harvested from their native lands. Yep, I'm ready to go check out the other side of the lake. Mammoth tusks, dire wolves, maybe even a 10,000 year old beaver would be mighty fine. They can make beautiful things out of just recycling back. The, the she'll sell, make something out of. Well, you can obviously see I could use a new boat. Tusk came along, I could definitely get a new boat. It would be really beneficial. Love you kids, be safe now. Okay. 
seat. Don't let go. Okay, hold on to it. We're trying to get the boat facing the other way. Okay, girls? Got it. Yeah. Walk forward now. Kate, you walk back. There you go. Now you guys can just ferry the line. Hello. Let's go of the line. We're going out to the anchor, okay? Okay. When you just pulled that, you just pulled my anchor in. You know, we're going to go through some struggles. We're going to have some tangles. We're going to have some miscues on who's doing what when. That's the way to do it, just like that. All right, now let's ferry our way up to the, to the float. Like everything in life, experience is knowledge. And we're going to gain a lot of experience in the next couple of days uh, messing with this net. We're going to go way upstream and then we'll have to readjust once, it, once I get out into this current. Fishing on the Yukon can be dangerous. People drown every year from either cold water or just falling out of boats. That line's going to go tight on her.
right down through this side one more time. Pull out as many of those little roots as I can. Now I'm just tearing off the roots on the bottom of it, trying to get it as thick a piece as possible. It's just like a big roll of fiberglass insulation. Now I'm gonna see if I can carry this thing.
great. Nothing in the net. Nothing? That's not good. Jesus Christ. I'm gonna take you guys to shore and then I'm gonna fuck around with some other stuff, okay? Winner's gonna come in with a roar 
and I need to be ready for that. This is the life that happened to me. I guess you could say I chose it, but um, I didn't come here with a plan. I didn't have any idea I was going to ever live like this, but living like this makes sense.
and uh, they're legally allowed to gather these kind of things. Oh, fuck! You didn't I cut didn't him. do that. There's no blood. Ross could turn into a nice little chunk of change. I'm not sure what it'll turn into until we cure it up and we uh, dry it out and clean it off and see what we got. It smells like mammoth. I would say you guys got a good score there, especially if you guys make it to jewelry. I'd say they could easily make a couple thousand bucks out of this stuff. But there was a period in my life when I got very interested in traveling, and most of the places where I traveled were cities. But there was still this part of me that was really interested in nature. fix up my sod house right now. I got the sod, I got a couple holes in the house I'm gonna patch up, and then the sod house will be in good shape when I get here next fall. Glenn will soon leave his camp for Fairbanks, where he'll spend the rest of his summer with his family and friends. I might be able to tear some pieces off without even using my axe. Here's a place where the sod slid down. I use this sod house mostly for storing meat, and in the fall I'll be hunting for a moose that'll get me through the winter I'll probably be putting the moose in this sod house because in this sod house the birds can't get to it. That's how I use the sod house in the fall. In the spring, I use the sod house to keep me cool when it would be too warm outside to keep me anymore. Okay, that's all patched up. This side here is where a grizzly bear was trying to get in here one day. The grizzly bear was pulling down the sod and I patched it up a little bit, but I need to finish that. I had a moose in this sod house, and the bear came along and tried to get in there to get that moose meat. For some reason, he didn't feel like using the door, so he started clawing at it right here. I was inside and I woke up and looked out, and there was a grizzly bear right here digging into the sod house. It was dark out. I could just see him in the moonlight, and I asked him to leave. And he did. He walked away, he went up that trail, he growled a little bit, and then he came back, so I yelled at him to leave. Go away, get out of here. So he walked over there, about 30 yards away from the camp, then he turned around and he started walking back towards me. And I shot over him, just to warn him, and he kept walking towards me, so I had to shoot him. That's the grizzly bear that I use in there for bedding. So after I shot the bear, he got to go in the sod house. Looks pretty good. I think I'm all done for now. I'm gonna keep one piece of sod here in case the bears come and rip more off. Living out here, we try and utilize all resources we provide 90% of our food needs here in the combination of hunting, fishing, and gardening. It's about 10 o'clock at night, and I'm hoping that uh, I can get a net in tonight and maybe start catching a few fish. Andy's last attempt with a net failed. This one has to pay off or he could miss the king salmon run entirely. King salmon are the first salmon to come up river here uh, in the upper Yukon. And uh, they're really, in the summertime months, they're the only fish that we really have in the river. The big problem though is that uh, this run is less than half of what it historically is. And they really need to have some conservation measures put on them. That's why I'm out with this smaller mesh net and uh, I'm hoping to catch almost all males. I, if I catch any females, I'm gonna turn them loose if they're alive and undamaged. So I'm gonna pull into shore here and start getting ready to set a net. I think what I'm gonna do is just set the anchor and the line and everything, and then I'll come back through and attach the net to it after I get the anchor and the line out. I gotta get out there quite a ways. Okay, that's gonna go on the anchor. I feel like 
like I have to keep someone else busy and that works just fine for me. Sometimes it's more useful to have hands on deck but they better know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> Otherwise they're not a help. Yeah, I think that, that line will work there. Out here where the current is is where I want that ball to be. So I'm gonna extend this out another 20 yards or so. feet is going to be ideal for fishing with this net. I think this will eventually work for me really well. It's like anything you do the first time, it's kind of a cluster the first time you do it. And then once you do it a few times, you figure out what works well and what doesn't. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. I can feel it on the bottom. I think I'll fish it like this for a day to come back in the morning and check it out. a lot see how their heart is pumping this blood out that cleans a lot of that blood out of the meat and it makes it a lot better for processing it the blood is what will spoil the meat so you have to have to get that out <laughs> but we got something feels good to finally catch a few fish Caribou, while they're racks, 
are enormous. Um, th there's not, you know, you might get 100, 120 pounds, maybe, out of a big guy. This little guy here, I don't know, probably 70, 80, maybe. I like the heart. I don't know, it's, it's tasty all the way around, man. Nummy, nummy, me. I'm anemic, gives me iron. The game bag, most people want to hang their meat so that it cools down, but the bugs, you've got flies, mosquitoes, bugs, they will lay their eggs on the meat instantly here. You put it in a game bag and uh, flies and the bugs can't get at it. And I'm just trying to get the big pieces off and then I'll get to getting the rest of the meat. Am I a pro at this? Has anybody ever taken the time to say, this is exactly the right way to do it so you don't look like a bone rod? No. See, here's a nice piece of meat. It's called the back strap. Look at that, nice and red. The Sufwe. You take a life, you, you be respectful about it, and you use that meat. I mean, I suppose I could saw these up and put them on the barbie, but I kind of like the rib meat, and I'll put it in a crock pot and have sandwich meat for a week or more. This is the end of the road for cutting this guy up. Uh, guts are there. I got the heart and stuff I wanted. I have whittled the meat down to, to what I feel is really good. I have been respectful. I thank the animal for helping me out. Excellent day. Really profitable.